Let's take a look at uh, some math functions. I have a um, application uh, open here and a button. I double click the button. Eventually we'll quit putting everything under a button click. And um, we're going to take a look at distance formula. The distance formula is d is equal to the square root of y2 minus y1 inside of parentheses squared plus x2 minus x1 uh, squared. That's inside of parentheses again. Now, what in the world is x1, x2, y1, y2? Well, this is my first point, so this would be x1, y1. This is my second point, so this would be x2, y2. Okay, well, let's uh, go over here. And um, I won't uh, hard code numbers in here. Let's see, dim x1, x2, y1, y2 as, uh, and I'm going to make them doubles. Even though they start off as integers, I know that everything's going to be double in the end anyway. So it doesn't hurt anything to put a double there. Now in intense calculations, where you got many decimal places, sometimes by uh, declaring something as double, you, uh, you have some issues pop up with the calculation. But nothing in this class should um, follow that form. x1 is going to equal to 3. y1 is going to equal to 5. That's my first point, 3, 5. And then x2 is equal to 8. And y2 is equal to 1. Now you can put this in all at once. And we're calculating the distance. So I'm going to come up here and have a new variable, distance. I could initialize distance, um, but I right here I'm going to go ahead and assign a value so you don't have to. So distance is equal to square root. Well, we haven't talked about square root. If you're taking algebra, you know the square root is the one-half power, and I could probably get around it by using a caret, uh, then 1 divided by 2 inside of parentheses, or 0.5. Um, but I can type in math dot and then um, square root. Do a beginning parentheses. Now everything inside will be uh, taken to the square root. Okay, well, if I look at what's inside, looks like I have a power here. I could do a care2, but I'm going to show another math function. Math.pow, that's power. And then the first part is y2 minus y1, minus y1, comma 2 for the second power. Okay, so that's going to be that squared plus math.pow and I'll do x2 minus x1 comma 2. Now as you're doing this it tells you what these uh, represent. Uh, it returns the specified number raised to the specified power. Um, it tells you y is a double precision floating point number that specifies a power. So that's our second power. And um, over here we got x2 minus x1. It's going to perform this calculation first. So it'll subtract those, and then it'll pass that and the 2 into this math function. Now, if I don't have a um, correct number of closing parentheses, then uh, when you do an enter, you'll see a red squiggly. And if you put the mouse over there, it'll tell you. Very important, wherever you are in programming, is the number of beginning parentheses has to match the number of closing parentheses. Okay, so let's uh, then do a message box, distance, and run this. And um, we get 6.4036. Six. Does that make sense? Let's see. If I were to actually plug in the values. Now, I'm not requiring you to have a lot of mathematical background for this class. So don't don't like stress. Um, y2 is 1, y1 is 5 squared, and x2 is 8 minus x1, which is 3 squared. That's going to give us 1 minus 5 is negative 4. 8 minus 3 is 5. Negative 4 squared is 16, plus 5 squared is 25, which gives us 41. 
And I could buy that uh, the square root of 41 is 6 point something. I could even uh, plug it in to a calculator I have here. And square root of 41 does give us 6.4 in the much decimal places. Maybe I want something additional to that. Uh, comes up the square root here. If I do a math dot, and you see there's a round. So I choose round, do a comma, and um, rounds it to the specified integral value. So I come over here, put in comma, 2. Now if I run this, it should round it two decimal places. Or run it. Um, oh, 6.40. Was that what it was? Let's see. 6.40. Okay, that makes sense. Um, let me get rid of that. Just to make sure, let's put a 3 here. And change that a lot. What code is running? Let's stop running it. And I'll put a 3 here. Now let's run it. And 6.403. Now I show this um, because this does a lot of different operations. Don't get stressed out if you're not uh, very comfortable with math behind it. Anything for this class that's assigned, the math portion will de be defined explicitly for you so you um, can go through and see exactly uh, what the calculation should be. When I've sat down with uh, individuals in business before, and they went over a formula I was to use. Uh, oftentimes, I'd ask them for an example. I'd say, give me an example so I can, I can see the numbers. If you can see the numbers, then you can program it. Now, this is kind of complicated here. So what you could do is you could have other variables. And I'm going to declare this on a different line, though it could be on the same line. Um, I'll call one y difference. And I'll call one x difference. Okay, so then uh, for my y difference, that's going to be y2 minus y1. For my x difference, I'm going to have x2 minus x1. So now I can get rid of some, some of this code here, make it a little bit simpler. This right here, the y2 minus y1, instead of having that calculation there, I can have y diff over here. I can have x diff. Now you might look at that and say, well, yeah, that's extra code and so forth. Um, but the idea is, is this a code that can easily be debugged later on or changed? I had um, one Perl program I looked at, P-E-R-L, that uh, had so much code within just a few lines that uh, I was having a lot of difficulty figuring out what in the world it was doing. Uh, by set, separating this, you see, okay, yeah, this is finding the difference of the y's. This is finding the difference of the x's. Then I could uh, square square these. So, um, and this, this is overkill. You don't have to go through all of this. y diff uh, squared and x diff squared. Then down here, I can say y diff. Now notice as I start typing it, it pops up with the variable names. So I can choose the y diff here. If you double click it, it comes up there. And then I'll do math dot power in my y diff to the second power. Then x diff squared is going to be equal to math dot pow x diff squared. Okay, so now I can get rid of this. This would be um, y diff squared. And this one would be x diff squared. And I could continue. I could break this down even further. The benefits of this is you got them separated and the, the code is easier to read. Some people would argue that it's easier to read the first way I wrote it. Um, that's kind of up to you. It's, it's up to the workplace. 
Um, they may define the, how they want the code written uh, for not to, again to control you but to make it so that your uh, program uh, your code can easily be modified later on. The benefit of having separate like this is if something's not working for example let's say I got an error then if I run this I get ooh, not a number what in the world does that mean? Uh, then I can come up here or I can choose a breakpoint and watch the video on debugging if you're not sure what I'm doing here. And then if I click start, click the button, it pops out down here. And I put my mouse over this, it tells me X1 is 0. But if I do uh, debug F11, step into, then it'll, it'll run that uh, line of code. And if I put my mouse over the X1, it says it's now equal to 3. Okay, that's working. Okay, 5, that's working. X2 is 8, so that's working. Okay, run that line of code. Y2 is 1, that's working. Y difference, negative 4. Y2 minus Y1. Y2 is 1, minus Y1 is 5. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. That's correct. Uh, F11, uh, X diff, what should it be? Uh, X2 minus X1. 8 minus 3 is 5, that's right. Come down to here, run that. It says 16. We said Y diff was negative 4. Negative 4 squared is a positive 16, so that's right. Come down here, 25. Uh, let's see, 5, what was this, 5? Five? 5 squared is 25, so that's, that's correct. Now, what this has told us down to this point is that all of this code is correct. Where the error is is right in here. Of course, we already know the error because you saw me change it, uh, but this minus should be a, a plus. Anyway, I just wanted to show you some examples of using the different math uh, functions. There's uh, different ones here. If you do math dot, you can browse through and see which ones are available. Big multiply. I'm assuming that's if you're multiplying big numbers together. Produces a full product of two 32-bit numbers. I never have used big multiply. Um, these trig ones never have never have used. Triple I E or um, I triple E remainder. Never have used that. So you can see that um, the majority of these you probably won't use unless you get into some scientific uh, programming. I programmed for 13 years full time, and uh, most of my um, most of my code was uh, based upon uh, database work. Um, worked program financials, um, some some uh, purchasing applications, service, uh, manufacturing. Uh, never programmed in the um, scientific field, uh, so most of my um, math was very basic math. That's what eighty percent of the jobs are. It's if you know how to do your order of operations, you pretty well have the math you need. Now I'm going to turn off that breakpoint. And this uh, shows you some math functions.